and curvy. So the tube, the green are the renal corpuscles here. The tube leaving it is tan. Okay? So on, on this renal corpuscle there's a tan tube connect, connected to it. Okay? It's the same as this tube here. So this tube leaving here is called the proximal convoluted tube. Okay? So when I look at these tan tubes here starting off, they are the proximal convoluted tube. And you see how much they're bent here. Okay? That's a reasonable drawing of what we have going on. A bunch of tubes here surrounded by blood vessels. Okay? Because realize right now we have a ton of this stuff coming out and we have to change it real quick. So this blood supply soaks up water and glucose. It starts right away. Okay? So the tan here is proximal convoluted tube. Okay? Inside we have cells that have a brush border. Increases their surface area. Excuse me? Here, inside there? Oh yeah, I'm sorry, sorry, yeah. The brush border has clumps of microvilli, that's where I was. I'm proximal convoluted tube. PCT. Okay, PCT, proximal convoluted tube. Okay, we have clumps of microvilli, so they have microvilli to increase their surface area. Okay, now... Where are the Right there. Um, see how oh, yeah. see okay. 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 So it looks like velvet, if you will. So they're on the on the brush. proximal okay. convoluted okay. tube cells. They're they're actually cuboidal cells. Okay. Now the next thing it jumps into is distal convoluted tube. But what, what I want you to realize is that this this would be urine flows around in this tube here. We're sucking water and glucose out of it. Then it connects to a lupa Henle. I'd rather use one of these ones here. So I have tan here, which is proximal convoluted tube. It goes to this loop of Henle, which is in the renal medulla or the renal pyramids. Okay. So after we go through the loop of Henle, which is down on my bottom half there, so I'll get to it in a moment. We come into this purple area. The purple area is the distal convoluted tube on the distal end of this whole thing. So we have a, a bent tube near the end, which is the distal convoluted tube. The distal convoluted tube is going into a collecting duct or collecting tubule. Okay, here they have it drawn in yellow because at this point we're essentially urine. Okay, so we started off with a ton of this stuff. Through, uh, through this co proximal convoluted tube, lupa Henle, distal convoluted tube, we've absorbed almost everything we want and we're putting it now into the collecting. Okay? So at this point it's urine. So we went from 300 liters down to one liter. Okay, the distal convoluted tube. I have it as OCT on mine, it's actually DCT. Okay? Um, the juxtoglomerular apparatus. Okay? Juxto means kind of close by or near positioning up. And what's the glomerulus? This tuft of capillaries. So when we look at this, the juxtoglomerular apparatus is a small endocrine gland and it includes kind of all of these groups of cells here. So when we take a look at this, it's a small endocrine gland, but there's, there's hundreds of thousands of glomeruli, so there's hundreds of thousands of these tiny little endocrine glands, okay? So on this you have the juxtaglomerular cells which is on the afferent arterial. So there's a patch of concentrated cells here, which are the juxtaglomerular cells, okay? And then there's a group of larger cells on here, which is, this is part of the DCT, and this is the macula densa. So the juxtaglomerular apparatus is made up of the juxtaglomerular cells and the macula densa. So the juxtoglomerular apparatus is a small endocrine gland. It secretes renin and erythropoietin. Okay. Renin does what? Angiotensis. Kind of controls blood pressure. So here you have something that's very blood pressure dependent and it secretes something that helps control blood pressure. Okay. Um, let's say I made coffee I mean, I don't really know how to make coffee, but let's say you just put all kinds of coffee grinds in there, okay? And you poured it on your filter, what would happen to your filter? It would get clogged, and I'm thinking maybe it wouldn't work that well, but I'm, I'm just kind of making that up. Um, 
the erythropoietin kind of controls the viscosity of our blood because this is also viscosity dependent. Because if you make the blood too thick, what happens to blood pressure? It goes up, okay? So if you increase the viscosity, it takes more blood pressure to drive it and things don't work as efficiently. So erythropoietin kind of controls, it looks at the viscosity of our blood and says, is, should, is there enough red blood cells? We, don't, we want enough red blood cells, but not too many, okay? So the juxtaglomerular apparatus is this small endocrine gland, which there's hundreds of thousands, and it's the juxtaglomerular cells and the macula densa together. Okay, so the nephron includes the glomerulus, the Bowman's capsule, PCT, DCT, and loop of Henle. That would be a nephron. So we're kind of looking at a nephron here. We're looking at a couple of them. Okay. So first of all, anything above the arcuate vessels is renal cortex. So when we look at the renal cortex, that's where we find the renal corpuscles. Okay. The nephrons usually extend into the medulla. Not all of them, but most of them do. Okay, so we have, when we take a look at, these are arcuate vessels, these are arcuate vessels, these are arcuate vessels, okay? When we take a look at the interlobular vessels, these are interlobular vessels, arteries and veins, these are interlobular vessels, these are interlobular vessels, okay? From the interlobular artery, the vessel going into the glomerulus, again, is the afferent arterial. So when we look at this, this one's drawn also very accurately, or a li little bit ex too much. We have the afferent arterial going in, the efferent arterial going out. Afferent in, efferent out. Something's got to give. You've got a lot more going in than going out. The, the balance is the glomerular filtrate. Okay? So on all of these, you see the afferent arterial larger, the efferent arterial smaller. So all of these are drawn a little bit extend, uh, exaggerated, but that's what we're looking at. Okay? So we have afferent and efferent arterial. Okay? Now, we have to have capillary beds because capillary beds are what are going to be absorbing anything that we want. We're, we're absorbing 295 liters. Okay? So we're absorbing an awful lot. So we have to have rich capillary beds. So you'll have... Um, you have renal corpuscles. Here you have a capillary bed. Um, here you have a capillary bed. Um, this involves vasorectal, so let me just get, get that in mind. Uh, renal corpuscles in green, proximal convoluted tube in tan, um, collecting tube in yellow, this DCT in purple. Um, this is proximal convoluted tube, has microvilli. This is distal convoluted tube, okay? Um, so when you look at each one of these models, you see how the distal convoluted tube crosses over the afferent arterial? That's where a juxtaglomerular apparatus will be there, a juxtaglomerular apparatus will be there, juxtaglomerular apparatus will be there. Here we have the DCT coming by the afferent arterial, and that's where we find the juxtaglomerular apparatus. Okay? Um, collecting tubule and lateral, uh, renal medulla. We have the loop of Henle. So when we see, I mean, there's a lot of loops here, but the red and blue are blood, okay? The yellow is just going down into the calyxes, but these purple, we have the DCT, the loop of Henle. Here we have like what we call the descending loop of Henle, the ascending loop, okay? The proximal convoluted tube is what's going down, and then it's coming up. So if we follow urine, blood went here, we formed this, we went through the tan, we go down the descending loop of Henle, the ascending loop of Henle, we go around the purple here, and then we finally go out, out to be would be urine, okay? So we have the loop of Henle, we have a thick segment and a thin segment, okay? Different cells that do different things. We have the descending, which is uh, tan and purple, they kind of, you have orange and purple, that's a stretch. Okay, so tan or whatever color you want to say. The ascending is from purple. What about in this model, descending and ascending? Okay, good. okay, this is a good question. Okay, so this shows Bowman's capsules cut in half here. What's connected to it is proximal convoluted tube. So this part is descending. This is ascending. You have thin and thick loops. This is ascending loop of Henle. It goes into the DCT. It goes right next to the afferent arterial because that's where the juxtaglomerular apparatus is going to be. Goes into the PCT, finally down the collecting tubular duct. Okay? The vasa recta is this blood supply that surrounds the uh, loop of Henle. So here, this is vasa recta. 
and this is vasa recta. Yeah, it's the last, it should be the last one. Okay. So vasa recta is this blood supply surrounding the loops of Henle. This one doesn't show, you know. This as well? No, this is your capillary beds up in your cortex. Okay. Okay. So the vasa recta is around the loop of Henle's in the renal medulla. Okay, so, um, actually I think there's one other model that's colored. Okay, so on this model, everything should kind of make sense to us also. The green, this is color coded with this. So the green is the Bowman's capsule, okay? We have a visceral epithelium and a parietal epithelium that lines Bowman's capsule. We have the glomerulus, which is the tuft of capillaries. There's a larger vessel going in, the afferent arterial and the efferent arterial, okay? Leaving Bowman's capsule is always going to be a proximal convoluted tube. It's supposed to look like it has a microvilli, so the blue here is representing the microvilli. Okay? So we have the PCT. The PCT does some stuff, and then it goes down a loop of the descending loop of Henle. So when you look at the descending loop of Henle, we usually see a thin, distal, uh, a thin loop of Henle. Okay? We have a thick loop of Henle. We come up and we go into the proc distal convoluted tube. On this distal convoluted tube, this concentration of cells is the macula densa. The cells surrounding the afferent arteriole are called the juxtoglomerular cells. Together, this makes up the juxtoglomerular apparatus. Finally, after the DCT, it goes to the collecting tubule. Okay, so this one's color coded with this one. Okay. So again on this one, when we take a look at a, a kidney, it has a capsule, a coat on the outside, it has a cortex, it has a medulla, and it has a pelvis region. Okay? Capsule, cortex, medulla, pelvis. Okay? The pelvis is what's collecting everything for the ureters. Okay? When we take a look at, we've got a capsule, when we take a look at the cortex, well let's look at blood supply. Blood supply, renal arteries, renal veins. They split into segmental arteries, segmental veins. Splits into interlobar arteries and veins. Splits into arcuate arteries and veins. Splits into interlobular arteries and veins. After we go interlobular arteries and veins, we have it from the interlobular artery, we have an afferent arterial. Okay? What's another name for afferent in the sense, or excuse me, the motor, the nervous system? Sensory. 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 So it's what goes in. Okay, so afferent is what's going into this. Okay, there's a tuft of capillaries in here, the glomerulus. The vessel leaving is the efferent arterial. It's going to continue on into a capillary bed. Okay, then it's going to go into the interlobular veins, arcuate veins, interlobar veins, segmental veins, renal vein. Okay, so pretty much blood flow. Um, on this model, uh, up here on this cortex, you just have renal corpuscles. Here we show renal corpuscles with the blood supply. This white tube connecting to the Bowman's capsule is a PCT. It goes to a descending loop of Henle, which has a thick and thin portion, goes to the ascending loop of Henle. The curved part here is the DCT, which connects to the collecting tubule. Okay? So Bowman's capsule, PCT, descending, ascending loop of Henle, DCT, collecting tubule. On this one, we see Bowman's capsule with a PCT connected to it, proximal convoluted tube. Eventually, it's going to wind up and be part of the DCT that has the macula densa in it. Okay? When we take a look at the glomerulus, it has an epithelial layer, which is called the visceral epithelium. What lines Bowman's capsule is the parietal epithelium. The afferent arterial has a group of cells surrounding it, which are the juxtoglomerular cells next to the macula densa makes up the juxtoglomerular apparatus. What are 